I thought it was a good speech. Uh, it was well delivered. Uh, it was very good as well because it was short. Sometimes these speeches go on forever. Uh, she set out the themes but didn't try to delve into the detail because I think that has to come later. But I think the most eye-catching part of the speech, which made sense given the, let's be honest, pretty awful two or three days that we had had up there with various people taking lumps out of each other, I think what was good about her speech was that she got past that and then we have uh, the juxtaposition, which is perfect, which is to say uh, it's the anti-growth coalition that we are against. So it's growth versus anti-growth. Now, I have talked to a couple of Labour colleagues I know and they went, ooh, mm. not sure about that one. Um, and I think that's the point. So now you start to frame it, so it makes it more difficult for people to, you know, take, ed take edge with it, I suppose. Uh, you mentioned a difficult few days, a pretty awful few days with colleagues taking lumps out of each other. It has been quite extraordinary, hasn't it? Discipline just breaking down. It has, but I was pondering it. I mean, I went on yesterday to tell people just to calm down and just think about what we're doing here. But in fact, as I thought about it yesterday, I thought, um, in a way, this might be cathartic because we'd been through a really tough period. This has been a terrible three years. No government has faced three years like this with COVID and then the post-COVID lockdown nightmare of, you know, high inflation, a war in Ukraine, just about everything you can think of for three years has really caused problems for the government. And then we've had the fall of Boris Johnson and then a leadership election where the leader comes who doesn't have a public mandate because it's not a general election, and people are divided because different people stood and lots of people supported Rishi Sunak, not her. So there's a bit of edge and bitterness. And so I thought to myself, actually, on reflection, that this may turn out to be quite cathartic because the Conservative Party, I think, in this conference, stared over the edge. And I think they stepped back uh, today with her speech. Now all I hope is that people recognise that there is no other way but to get behind Liz Truss and, and make it work for her. And I think this growth versus the anti-growth coalition is a very good starting point for the Conservative Party. It could bring them together very well. You say that people stayed over the edge but then realised there's no other way but to row in behind Liz Truss. I have to say that that is quite different to what some of your other colleagues are saying at conference after spending a few days there. There's already yeah. talk about changing the rules of the 1922 committee so that there could be another leadership contest, mm. of potentially bypassing the members uh, and MPs deciding on a unity candidate because this is someone who they don't believe can win an election, yeah. that's going on. Yeah, I, I, it's going on amongst a few of my colleagues who, you know, sometimes need to grow up and secondly, need to figure out what happens next. So if they can't get unity now, what were they going to unity candidate suddenly pop out of nowhere and say, it's all right, everybody, we're together. They have somebody that the party voted for, it's within the rules. They've got to get behind that individual and that happens to be Liz Truss. The second bit about this is, if you go on changing your leaders, and having internecine sign warfare, I tell you what, with the polls the way they are now, you might as well head straight for the exit door because that's exactly where we will go. And it will be very uh, painful for many people. So it's very true. I've seen this time and time again in the time I've been in politics, is that there are, to be quite frank with you, some people who are really intellectually challenged about politics and who don't understand that it's the electorate that puts us here. And if they lose trust in us and if they think that we're incompetent because all we do is fight each other. This happened to Labour, it's happened to us in the past, and they will not vote for us. So what, right now, that speech today was really important because they have to get behind this concept of us for growth and those people, what she called the coalition, the anti-growth coalition. We need to now understand who the real enemy is here. It's those who are really opposed to growth and those who actually want growth and are prepared to take the decisions that are necessary. If they can't fit within that, well, all I can say to them is they're on their way out. You have done a lot of work mm. in your time in politics around poverty. Mm. I just wonder if you look at what's happened in the first month or so of the Liz Trust Premiership, trying to abolish the 45p rate of tax, um, not saying that benefits will be raised in, in line with inflation, scrapping the cap on bankers' bonuses. Is there a risk that the Conservatives are effectively playing into what some people have always thought about the Conservatives, that you care about rich people and you don't care about poor people. Well, I set up the Centre for Social Justice uh, to try and help all politicians, but the Conservatives particularly, to understand that it's important to understand exactly how difficult it is 
when you're on low income because things cost more on low income than they do for wealthier people. You know, you get your bank statement printed, they charge you more for it. You know, cash is how you live your life, but you try finding cash sometimes, it's really, really difficult. So all these things cost a bit more. So my point really to them was to try and understand that therefore we have to make sure that they have a floor put under them so that they can uh, move back into work. And you want people to move back into work, there are five million people outside of that, uh, and you want them to uh, go through. So those are the sort of changes you need. And the reality, really, for all of us is not to make simplistic solutions the answer to this. Uh, we want people to move back into work. I did the big reforms on universal credit. It helped people survive through the pandemic. It's there to be used. It's very good about getting people back to work. And we need to make sure that we understand that nature. And the one, if I have a criticism at all, uh, this phrase, uh, the growth, uh, those in favour of growth versus the anti-growth coalition, that actually should have started two or three weeks ago, because the argument right now that we should be making is those who are in favour of growth, what growth does for those on the lowest incomes, lifts their incomes, gives them more jobs, gives them more opportunity. It's not about wealthier people particularly, it's about people on low incomes of growth. We should have made that argument all the way through, then talked about tax, and be very careful about then how you juxtapose that. So the 45p tax rate was, uh, when set against benefit cuts, is just mm. stupid, and therefore that... Both needs to be cleared out of the way. Liz has done one, and I think they'll clear the other out of the way too. And just to be clear, by clearing the other out of the way, you're saying that benefits should effectively rise in line with inflation? Yes, again, I have to keep telling my colleagues and others, this is looking backwards, OK? So the last rise was below inflation at the time it rose because it was based on the previous six months uh, where inflation wasn't as high. So actually, already, benefits have come in under inflation. At the next one, in a way, it'll be setting, resetting the bar so that they're stable. My view on this is it's, it's the key to get it, uh, getting the benefit bill down is to get people back to work. That was always what we designed in Universal Credit. But you think Liz Truss should... And then they go paying tax and then we become better You think off. that Liz Truss should come out now and commit uh, to saying that benefits will go up in line with well, inflation, I think as was promised? I think the government's going to have to say something about this, clearly. I don't... I understand fully why she couldn't say anything during the conference. I have no problem about that. And therefore, those who are fighting to say, say something or not say something, I think the truth is she's not going to jump ahead of the statement they're going to make on the economy because it would be daft. You then start ruling out all sorts of stuff and you never get anywhere. But when that's done, I think they need to make it clear that actually uh, that's not the right way to go because you want people to be able to move swiftly up into work. And if you reduce that amount of benefit they're getting, which, by the way, isn't that great, uh, then uh, it makes it more difficult to take the big jobs, uh, the big choice about taking those jobs, doing part-time work, moving up the scale. So, And in a cost-of-living crisis with inflation... At Everything else bearing down on them. And as I said earlier on, at the lowest level of income, the cost of living is actually higher because things are more expensive. So we need to take that into consideration as well. It's not the same. Yes, there are lots of things to be done in taxation. I think particularly the thresholds, by the way, which drags senior teachers, senior nurses in who are not wealthy people. That needs to be looked at when we get to that. But that's my personal view. But when you talk about people on benefits, we should recognise a lot of them are beyond the world of work. Uh, and so you've got to be very careful how you do this. And I think for a party like mine, if you're talking about growth, talking about tax cutting, you can make sure the message is well-rounded and you understand the problems that exist for those down at the lower incomes.